So at this point, I've decided where I'm going to tape uh, the background. This is only one side of the background. Well, I'm planning on having a hard line uh, on this side and everything else to be kind of like a foggy uh, edge, kind of like a soft, soft edge around it. Um, so all that I'll do right now is tape this area where I don't want any of, of this background paint and uh, spray that color there. Okay, so the color I'm planning on using in the background is made of uh, metallic paint. Uh, this is uh, Wicked Silver with uh, violet and blue and, and a bit of yellow. So it's kind of like on the gray side, but also uh, it's kind of like a, a purple gray color. And um, only because I like that color on this painting. Okay, so I will remove the tape and see what I got. Okay, so that's um, that's how this side is going to be, and then the the rest of the plate is going to be just uh, a soft edge. I'll leave it there for now. Um, I'm gonna move ahead and start taping uh, the zombie uh, because we're going to be doing the background. So I'm gonna get close to the edges, but I don't I don't want to be uh, concerned about about going into the zombie. And ruining it, so I'll just tape it using uh, a transparent masking, and then cutting it out with the razor blade, and that way we can continue doing the background. Okay, here we go. I have gone ahead and I have uh, masked the zombie. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've cut the outline out here and out here um, I have a hard edge right here on this corner so I want to be careful whenever I be working around around it so that uh, I don't end up with a hard edge right there 
Uh, now that this part is done and it's all taped up, um, I'm gonna get rid of some of this overspray around around the zombie. Uh, not all of it, but uh, most of it. Just to make sure that it's not gonna show up uh, through the other layers that we'll be doing. And that's the good thing about using your own white underneath because now I can just go and cover that using exactly the same color that I have underneath. Okay, I think that's enough. I think that's good enough. There's still some of it showing through, uh, but I'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna start by uh, doing some more zombies. Uh, the whole idea is to work from the foreground towards the background. Um, so in other words, I'm doing whatever whatever appears to be in the front, I'll start painting that. And uh, whatever is in the background, um, that will be the last thing I'll do. Okay, uh, another thing about the background is that uh, the background will be monochromatic, uh, meaning that it will only have one color. And that color will be the dark color that we used uh, starting the painting. It's kind of like a greenish black. Um, so I'll start on the left side. And I'm using the zombie with the broken wrists and broken legs. Uh, and as you can see, this stencil is quite big. If I wanted to fit it here, it's not gonna fit. Uh, but that's okay, uh, because all I'm trying to get is kind of like the, uh, a part of it. Um, I don't need to do the whole zombie. Um, for example, if I wanted to paint that on this side, uh, it will fit, but it will throw away the perspective. So. Uh, in cases like this, you don't need to spray the entire stencil. You can just use part of the stencil uh, to accommodate uh, so, so that uh, it looks correct on your painting. First thing I'll do is I'll secure my stencil just so that I can see how dark the, the, the painting is looking. Uh, another thing is I don't want the background to be so, uh, you know, uh, calling so much attention. So what I what I will do uh, to avoid conflicting the background with the foreground is, uh, first of all, the background is monochromatic. I'm only using one color. The second thing is uh, the contrast on the on the background will be less. Uh, everything is not gonna have really bright highlights and really dark uh, and really dark. Uh, blacks so instead it will have a lot of darks but afterwards i'm gonna put kind of like a small mist a, a bit of uh, paint on top so it will push everything back so let me get started here OK, 
Okay, that's looking good. Uh, I see that I'm getting overspray on the left side. Um, if you're having overspray and you want to avoid it, you can go under the stencil like this and put a piece of paper there. And now you can just spray comfortably. Look at this. Yeah, it's looking horrible. That's what we want here. Okay, it looks like um uh, it's looking good here so yeah let me just remove the stencil so there we have the summit that's gonna go on this side I did get a, a bit of overspray here uh, I could use some more white to get rid of it uh, but it's okay we'll deal with it later now I'm gonna move to the right side and I'm gonna put another zombie, I'm gonna paint another zombie here and uh, I also wanna use another background stencil. This is the other stencil and again this is uh, size one as well as this one right here is size, size one, this is size two, uh, this is size one. Um, I'm looking to see how this can go. I'm thinking something like this. If, if I turn it around, um, it kind of doesn't look proper. So maybe I think I like it more this way. Um, okay, so I think I'll paint it. I think I'll paint it right here, but I'm th I'm seeing something else there. Um, I'm using another stencil as well, so let me get that one. This is the other stencil I'm using. So here's an example. I'm not I haven't decided which one is gonna go on the front, but. To make sense of the perspective, it makes more sense to use this hand in the foreground and then the zombie behind it. And like I said, you want to work from the front towards the back. So if I'm thinking on doing this in the front, then I should do this one first. And for that, I'm thinking I'll put these hands right here. It looks like uh, zombies coming out of the graves. Um, so I'll start with this one. Now let me see what I got. So it might be hard for you to see. Uh, but that's what I got right now. I see that I need some, some work here on this hand, that grave right there, this hand. And that's the reason why you, you wanna hold it in place so you can be uh, moving it back and forth. Okay, that should be good enough. So, that's what we're getting with this stencil. Um, I'll just do some more branches. Uh, 
that's good enough um, so now now I'll, I'll do the other zombie kind of creeping from on uh, from behind that one um, maybe somewhere here So, since I already have something in front of it, I gotta be careful how I spray this zombie. Or else I can move it a little bit, whatever I think it will fit. Mm. I'll give it a try right here. I'm just checking to see what I what I'm getting. Okay, so let me see what I'm what I'm getting. And uh, I think I like that. This stencil I'm, I'm gonna use here on the foreground in front of the zombies. Uh, this one is this one is dirt texture, and I think this will work really good here to make uh, some dirt texture so that it looks like uh, the dirt has been digged around. The zombies have been digging it. So, let's see what we get. I think I'll hold this down because it's flapping too much. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah, this stencils you can really make some crazy stuff with it. Um, I don't know if you can see that dirt texture since it's um, focusing through the side. I don't know how sharp that's gonna look, uh, but no worries. At the end, you, you're gonna be able to see all this detail. Only thing about these stencils is you need to have your paint consistency proper. It cannot be a really chunky paint. That is not it's not gonna work as good. Um, all I'm doing with this dirt stencil is layering it. I am mostly using the the bigger texture on this stencil. Um, there are other sizes that uh, could have also worked, but I think for this painting, this is good enough. I'm just basically just putting in some texture. Cover in the white, that's all you want to do.
pretty much what I'm doing is creating my own imaginary world here. Uh, this texture stencil is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave this like that. And I think I'll put some brown as well so it looks like dirt. Uh, but I'll come back to that later. Um, I think I'll move to the background now. And uh, this will be the last stencil I'll use for this painting. And this is a size 2 graveyard. Um, I'm gonna put it kind of kind of in an angle so it's a, a bit more interesting than if I just put it perfectly flat. Um, this stencil has positioning marks because it's so long. Uh, but I don't think I'll be needing them. So I just need to get rid of some of this overspray here. I don't want to be dealing with that. And again, I'm using white for that. That will reduce the overspray. Same on this side. Let this dry and then uh, then we'll spray that. Okay, that paint is dry. So I'm gonna move ahead and do this background. And again, we are using our same old black that we've been using throughout this whole painting. Um, I don't think I will do the background as strong as all all these other paintings. I wanted to give uh, a sensation like uh, there is some sort of fog or something like that. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, see that? I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It looks kind of ghosty uh, being light like that. So on this area right here, I'll just add a bit more.
I'm having a lot of tip, uh, tip dry. It's not letting the paint come out. But that's okay. We're moving right along. Um, I want to make that tree slightly darker uh, than the rest. Uh, same for this one. See what we're getting. I want to make this crosses a bit better. So that's what we got. Uh, I think. I'm gonna put some of this on this side also so that this side doesn't look so flat um, maybe I'll get this area and do it on the other side as well um, that looks good maybe I'll, I'll do some crosses right here gives the sense as if he's coming from back there all the more creepy <laughs> um, I'll just turn it this way and see if it changes it's okay So I'll do I'll darken this other side. All I'm doing is using this same color. Okay, so all that is left to do now is uh, same like on this side, uh, I'll go around some of this and kind of like uh, give it a kind of like a vignette uh, and darken all around the painting. Then after that, all that is left is clear coated and uh, we have a finished painting. Now, let me remove the masking.
I'm gonna remove the masking uh, so that we can see what we get and hopefully we don't lift any of the paint. Okay. Um, so that's what I got using what one, two, three, four, five, six, six stencils. Uh, I think I could have done also, uh, I could have done a similar painting without maybe just this one in the background. But this is a really cool design, I really like it. Um, I like that you can kind of create like your own worlds when you combine them together. Uh, I was looking at these hands here and I was thinking that I might need more hands. Uh, although I, I'm not going to do them on this video. Uh, some ideas would be to just grab any of the zombie stencils. And if you flip it around, you're going to have hands as well. Uh, they don't look uh, exactly like these other ones because those are, you know, uh, on purpose they are doing that but you know use whatever stencils you already got just use them try to find other uses uh, for example this other uh, zombie right here has a crooked hand that I didn't I didn't uh, include on the painting uh, that will really nicely fit somewhere here so you know those are some ideas you can you can find more uses to the stencils you got and uh, make uh, even more, uh, you know, creative paintings. So uh, now what is left is I'm just gonna add some of this, this same metallic color all around it, and and I'm gonna try kind of frame the whole painting, and uh, let's see how it looks. I have some brown, I'll just add it here for the dirt. Very little, I don't want to overdo it. And now all it needs is clear coat. And that's it for this painting. And once, once it's clear coated, I'll do a close up so that you can see all the detail in it. And um, if you have any questions about any of the process, any, you know, while watching, you have any ideas and, and you want to ask any questions, you know, feel free to leave any comments. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, you know, also some suggestions. I, I know sometimes when you're watching the video, uh, you see someone painting and, and you you think oh I should I, I would have done it differently you know that's also that's part of it you know that's part of the video to inspire you and and to create your own artwork be it zombies or be it something else uh, you know uh, for at least for me it's inspiring to see someone else painting so I hope for you it's also inspiring to see me doing some work like this uh, please leave any comments, like the video, you know, subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. And um, until next video, guys, thank you for watching.